Hi, good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, May 16th board meeting, 2023 board uh, work session. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and liberty and justice for all. I did want to start with a few announcements. Um, first, we would like to take a moment this evening during National Police Week to thank all of our police officers for the amazing job they do every day keeping our community safe. Also, congratulations to all the award winning uh, award winners of tonight's um, police awards at the library tonight, the Yasing Police Department. We have a lot of brave officers. Uh, the paving is in progress on Tappan Terrace and Leewood Drive. Thank you to the superintendent Pete Connolly and to the highway department for the great work that they do. Um, I hope everybody's had the opportunity to vote in the school board on the school budget, school board and library board elections today. If not, the polls are still open until 9 p.m. at the Ossining High School. Green Ossining is having their repair cafe at the community center on Saturday from 11 to 3 p.m. Bring your beloved but broken items to be fixed by our talented community volunteers. The Sing Sing Kill Brewery is having a weekend full of events and a celebration of their fifth anniversary. Check their website for more information. Westchester Collaborative Theater in partnership with the Austin Arts Council presents Living Art. It has an interactive art, experiences, art experience that should not be missed. There are three more opportunities over this weekend to see this show. Please go to westchestercollaborativetheater.org for more information. Wednesday, May 24th at 4.30 p.m., the Village of Ossining will be dedicating a pollinator garden to Sandy Galef, our, form, our former assemblywoman for her outstanding leadership and, and decades of long, decades long public service. The, and the ever popular Westchester Craft Crawl will be back this weekend, May 20th and 21st from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., rain or shine. Each location of the four locations hosts 12 or more artists and has a great assortment of crafts, crafts to choose from. And the Ossining Boat and Canoe Club will be having a memorial service for sailors lost at sea uh, at 11 a.m. on Sunday, the 21st. Anyway, 21st. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any announcements? Okay, seeing none. We have our <coughs> departmental report. He's here. Good. Stuck in traffic. Hey, Bill. All right. Hi. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good. Did you get stuck in traffic? Good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> On my way to pick up my daughter from lacrosse. So. <laughs> Um, so I, um, let me get started. So we've got uh, the big thing that we're doing right now in the recreation department is registration for summer camp. And uh, we started the registration here in March and we have over 500 kids registered right now. Um, there's still time to register. We're looking for counselors. Um, this is the biggest program we have. One thing that I like to remind everyone each year is that the recreation department is the largest um, youth employer in the village and the town. We hire about 60 to 70, 16 to 18 year olds to work the summer camp. So um, we are in need of counselors. So if you know anyone, please have them reach out to us because um, we could use some extra counselors because of the number of kids that we have. One thing that's different with camp this year is typically we use two schools, Brookside and Claremont. Claremont is not available this year. Um, the school district is doing work at Roosevelt, which typically handles their um, summer classes. So those kids are gonna be going to Claremont to do summer classes. So the school is not available for the camp 
Um, so that camp is gonna be moving to Vets Park. Um, this is not unusual because we run um, a camp uh, out of the parks at Ryder. Uh, and this year would be Vets and also Nelson. So it's not an unusual thing, but um, just to let our folks know that's a little different than what's been going on in the past year. Um, another big thing that's going on is pickleball. Um, as you know, the town has three pickleball courts at Ryder Park. Um, we have currently 25 people that are registered for permits. Uh, we've been having some issues and trying to educate the public on the need for a permit there. Um, so we're working on that. We are going there and doing checking permits and uh, periodically just educating people through emails, letting them know that uh, guests are not allowed there. Um, some folks think that since they have guests and use the courts whenever they want to, but uh, everyone that is there needs to get a permit. So uh, we're working on that. We anticipate that there's gonna be more permits going on because the courts there at Ryder are so, so good. And starting uh, in July, uh, the indoor courts at the community center will not be available during the day because of the summer camp. So uh, people looking to play pickleball, that is their only option um, in the village and the town. Just an update on the pool renovations. Um, this is a project that is going to start uh, in uh, August projected. Uh, the initial phase of the project is to resurface the pool and replace the LED lighting. During this time, the pool will be closed. Uh, it's anticipated that it will be closed one to two months. Um, once it, that work inside the pool area is completed, the pool will then reopen and the contractors will move on to uh, rehab the locker rooms. And the completion date of that is at the end of the year in December. Uh, so we are very excited by the end of the year, we'll have uh, all new locker rooms. Uh, big thing is we're adding a family locker room, which is something that um, is important. Um, when, when dad comes to the pool with a, with a young, young girl, he doesn't necessarily want to take her into the men's locker room. So a pool locker, a uh, family locker room will now be available for, for situations like that. DRI project uh, with the community center renovations. Um, currently last Thursday, we started the public engagement um, through a webinar online. Uh, the plan is to continue this public engagement uh, throughout the first part of the summer. Uh, we'll be out at lots of different events um, and, and uh, things that are going on in Austin to get public input on what they would like to see with changes to occur inside the community center. Um, we hope to go to uh, bid for design services uh, later in the summer. And the plan is that towards the end of the year, we will go out to bid for uh, construction and construction would begin in 2024. So we're very excited about that to get that up and going as well. Um, related more to the town, uh, the playground projects, one with Gerlach, just to update on that, that has been ordered and we're awaiting the installation timing for that um, playground up at Gerlach Park. And the Ryder playground, uh, we finally got back the uh, plans that the Recreation Advisory Board um, recommended and we sent that to the supervisor's office um, just towards the end of last week. So the process is in place to get the purchase order for that to get that up and going. So that's exciting because we'll have uh, two new playgrounds in the parks in the, uh, in the town. Uh, River Jam series and family entertainment. So this is uh, the highlight of the summer with the recreation programs down at Lewis Ango. Uh, the bands are set for River Jam. Uh, we're working with the marketing uh, person who is coming up with all the uh, banners and flyers. And we're just you know, double checking all that and getting that up and going. So we expect to have those materials very soon. Uh, one thing that we're doing uh, with the Recreation Department we have been doing for the last couple of years is a family entertainment series. And this is a six week, um, program that we do. It's once a week on Tuesdays where we offer some sort of 
family entertainment, whether it be uh, a circus, music, um, a family game night. Uh, one thing we're doing this year, and we're going to be doing it at the town park at Lewis Ango, is um, a, a band called the Little Mermen. And this is exciting. This is a Disney cover rock band. And uh, they're very popular. It's a band out of New York City. Um, this should be a, a pretty large event. We anticipate we're going to have food trucks there. Uh, we're also looking to make it a community night where we're going to invite all the different um, organizations that work with children and families to have a tent so that they can distribute their information and materials. And that's going to be on August 15th at Lewis Engel Park. So, uh, you know, come dress in your favorite uh, Disney costume and uh, you might be uh, eligible to win some, uh, some Disney prizes there. Um, I know Pat Yost is going to talk a little bit later about the work that the Recreation Advisory Board is going to be doing. Um, so uh, we'll, you know, I'll be on for that as well if anybody has any questions. So thank you. And if anybody has any questions about my report, I'm happy to uh, answer. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want me to start my presentation? Yep, when you're ready. Yep, right, yep I am, sorry, I wasn't sure. So uh, first of all, thank you to everyone um, for inviting inviting me to speak uh, to you all on behalf of the Austin Recreation Advisory Board. I have a couple of slides to say, to, to share, uh, which really just kind of talk about a little bit about the objective of the board, um, who's on it, uh, what we've done over the past year and what we're hoping to accomplish this year. So I will share those. And let me know if, um, when you can see the slide, please. You can see it. Okay, you good? Good. Great. Um, so the Recreation Advisory Board is, is, very, is unique. It is uh, one of the very few intermunicipal uh, advisory boards in the county. Um, it, we've got representatives from the town of Austin, the village of Briarcliff, and the village of Austin, uh, so the, the town, the unincorporated areas. And the purpose of the, the board is um, we're, 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 pretty act, we're pretty active and we try and be uh, supportive of all the different activities that go on um, within the entire uh, town. So we can we make recommendations. Uh, we're advisory only, right? Regarding you know protection, maintenance, enhancements of the parks, um, policies and functions of the recs and parks department. And um, Bill, you know, is is our kind of one of our key participants, and you know he's a, he's a member and he. And it works with us on a regular basis and, and attends all the meetings and leads them. You know, from the town perspective, um, you know, we've, we've got several representatives and, and you know, Councilman Minicchio is a regular attendee and you know, he serves as the liaison back to, uh, to, to this group from here. Um, yep, question? He's very good at it. Yes, he is. Thank you. Good. And we appreciate and we appreciate his communication and support. Okay. Um, you know, the scope is, you know, it's it's pretty amazing that, you know, but one of the things that we kind of make sure we tell ourselves very regularly, you know, we provide input on use of process policy programming, capital plans, policies and issues. And and the reality is like there, there are a huge number of parks. And the amount of space that is available to the residents of the town of Austin and the and the villages is really amazing, and they're wonderful assets uh, for the for the community, and they're available for use. And it's really important that we, as a group, we really try and one um, get as much use as possible from the from the facilities make sure they're in safe and as good a shape as possible. 
and and really focus on kind of long term, you know what what's needed to make sure that they stay that way for you know the next ten to twenty years. Over the last year, we've we've been fairly, pretty active, right? Um, we continued our meetings. We can um, provided input on the budget proposals. You know, primarily capital spending, um, a little bit on maintenance through Bill and his discussion. Um, we really had a fairly uh, significant input into the DRI submission process. You know, it was mainly focused on uh, the Caputo, uh, the Rec Center recommendations, and that's something that we've been kind of talking about as a board over the last several years in terms of what's it going to take to make sure that everybody can use that facility and that we maximize its its utilization. Um, you know, we talk about programs and parks, the summer camps, um, safety related items and usage as they kind of as the questions come up related to any of the um, facilities and and people within the public can you know, like we hear about those in multiple different ways, you know, so they can come items in the past year have been raised directly to rec advisory board members, uh, some of them have come directly through Bill uh, and the, the Parks and Recreation Department. And some people, uh, sometimes they come to us through, you know, the elected officials as well. And it's important that we make sure people know that there are many ways that they can raise issues or questions or comments to the Recreation Advisory Board. Um, we provide input on major capital projects, Veterans Park, the Rainer Ballpark, uh, the activities that are undergoing at the pool. And you know we the, currently some of the town specific investments at Ryder and Gerlach, we talked a lot about um, how important it was to have accessibility and kind of look at the designs with that in mind and from that provided some suggestions from that perspective, right? Um, and then the other thing, the key thing that we do is we um, we ask for presentations from the youth sports programs to make sure that. Um, they're like focused correctly. They've got the right oversight in place, financial management, and to hear from their needs and what they might need. This year, we're going to continue to do some of the similar stuff, but we do have a couple of key um, things that we're really trying to focus on. You know, obviously, there's the ongoing activities. Um, the about four years ago, uh, we as a group we went out and we visited all the parks and we put together a fairly robust sort of report that we shared with the town and the village on suggestions for you know long-term improvements and investments to make sure that the the parks were you know you know up to you know what we what we as the advisory board thought would make sense um we're, we're going to redo that this year we're in the process of making the visits to the different parks um and you know a lot has been done over the last you know four or five years in terms of investments and um, making sure that you know the you know the the, the fences at the Ryder Ballpark or you know different different investments at Veterans Park um, from that perspective and so a lot's been done and we want to make sure that the the survey reflects that and that we're you know continuing to think ahead so that. Um, both the town and the village really have something in hand to, to reference when it comes time to think about um, capital investments and improvements to make. Um, we're, this year, one of the things we're going to at least talk about a little bit are kind of county and state connections to the trailway of the aqueduct. And, you know, is there anything that makes sense from that standpoint? And, you know, we're going to share it with the town and the village, and we're actually going to um, invite the county to hear about it this year. And that came out of a uh, surprise visit from uh, uh, Mr. Latimer at one of our meetings. Um, he kind of talked to us a little bit and he was he was fairly intrigued and he wanted to hear kind of what we had to say, which was great. Um, so that'll kind of help to review some, provide suggestions on sort of the capital plans for the parks and the recreation department over time. Um, with the DRI underway, uh, it's another key focus of us for us this year in terms of the supporting the uh, the planning, the input gathering, and providing information to people. So we're going to look to the uh, Rec Advisory Board representatives at as many of the um, events that we can, where there will be either parks and recs tents um, with information available for the TRI and from that perspective. Um, the other thing, and this is a little bit more focused on uh, some of the some of the village related items is that 
um, we're looking to start a Friends of Austin's Parks group um, and to try and um, as you kind of help create a, a, a separate entity to support potential fundraising for areas where money might not be available at the town of the churches. And so that's kind of what we've done and what we're hoping to do this year. And uh, the last page is simply just a map of all the partners. So with that, I will stop sharing and ask if anyone's got questions. Um, does the par a village have a park steward program the way that the town does? The Ryder Park does? So when you say steward program, um, there, as in... Uh, Volunteers. Monitors. Um, Together to rid the park of invasives and plant native species, things like that. No, yeah, no, we don't. No. Um, you know, it's a great program. Um, it's a very community building program, and uh, we get a lot out of it. I'm hoping to um, that we can expand it to the Sally Swope Park that's just been redone. Um, I know there are some gardeners in the area that are interested in having you know some opportunities throughout the year um, we work with the uh, union to make sure it's okay and um, you know to enhance the park that's close to them so we like that uh, what else did I want to ask any questions no, no. questions thank you nope. thank you, Pat. Um, thank you. I, I'm very you know, I'm, I'm always impressed with all of the different aspects of the uh, Recreation Advisory Board, and that these are uh, volunteer community members who really care and take the time and go to our parks and really represent many different demographics of our community to give of themselves. Um, and it's really appreciated. I know you've been leading it for quite a while now. So, you know, we want to thank you for you know all the dedication and making sure that the parks you know reflect what the community wants to see and and just being out there hearing um you know and helping the parks evolve as the trends and then the wants of the community evolve so just thank you very much thank you and i'll make sure that i pass those on to the to everybody else on, on, the, on the committee because you know the, on the board because it really is a you know, volunteer effort. Like I said, you know, everyone's going out to the parks to do this survey, right? So, um, and I didn't even realize we had an open um, space on the board. So we'll work on that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good. So, Bad. thanks, Bill. Do we no, have, thanks. Are you guys going to stay for the presentation? Are they here? Yeah. Okay. No. Um, so, you know, speaking of parks and things that are going to go in there, our next presentation. Um, is an offer of a donation of a piece of art slash um, park equipment that we're going to hear about from this young artist who recycles uh, windmills of all things and other recycled materials to make usable for pieces of some uh, art in our parks. So let's hear. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate I appreciate you guys uh, allowing us to present to you here. So let me share my screen. Let's jump right into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go through this deck. If you have questions, you you know you can ask them. However, we're going to at the end open it up for questions. Um, so uh, feel free to. You don't really have to take notes because you're really going to get this deck uh, regarding Canvas and our story. So let me know when you guys can see my screen. Mm -hmm. it should be. You guys see it? Okay, perfect. Let me go into. Uh... Perfect. So uh, the town of Austin, we're so thankful that you guys allowed us here to present. And uh, we're going to give you a little bit of the Canvas story, who we are. Canvas is a manufacturer of products made from retired wind turbine blades. We can guarantee you that you'll never hear another vendor at this time saying that at all. Um, and as you can see, there here is a platter kind of of our products. We've made our products, uh, we, we've given them human names, uh, Deborah, Carol, Mimi, Bell, uh, because they are built for connection, right? The reality is, is these turbine blades have powered so many homes across America, you know, from, you know, from the West Coast to the East Coast to all the way in between. And it's a scenario where 
uh, we are creating these products uh, for uh, connection. Also, we're so happy to present and communicate that uh, at the end of this month, we are going into full production and uh, the first shipments will be arriving here um, in the next month or so. So uh, like I said, Canvas right here located in Northeast Ohio in a city called Rocky River, Ohio and our produ production studio is in a town called Avon, Ohio. A little bit of the inspiration of Canvas, you know, what we have, uh, this uh, uh, inspiration has been going on for about three years. We've been working with uh, these wind farm owners and one of the biggest issues they have is uh, when the turbine over, you know, they're built to last for a long period of time. However, because of maybe federal incentives um, and, and uh, better technology, some of the blades have to be discommissioned or decommissioned. And so it becomes a scenario where um, there is metal. And then the, the biggest issue is the fiberglass blades. You can't really do much with fiberglass. It'll, uh, what ends up happening, they either get put in a landfill and there's some other processes where they try to burn them and put them into other things like cement and things of that sort. However, uh, the biggest and the best solution that we've been able to discover is turning these products into uh, functional art, products that go into civic, you know, city, state, towns across America. And the great thing about it, about these blades, they're hard to recycle, no question about it, but it's a benefit because now you're, you have a product that can last 20, 30, 40 years uh, in your community. Um, and many of your citizens will enjoy them from that standpoint. And you think of it, how we do it is each of these products are cut from the blade. We, we go straight down the blade and we can get about 50 products. So you think of 50 products per blade and about 5,000 to 8,000 of these blades are coming down every single year and that number's increasing. Well, you know, we have a, a potential for thousands and thousands of products. And uh, that's why where we've come uh, the, over this period of time, over this three year period that we've been on this journey to uh, find the solution for uh, the industry. Our mission is inspiring communities around sustainability and motion by uniting retired materials to create exceptional products. So we think about uh, inspiring communities. These products, as mentioned, have empowering homes in the community. So they belong in the community. Sustainability and motion, we're not the poster child of sustainability. You know, we make mistakes. We use trucks to, to move these, these, these products from that standpoint. Also, the United Retired Materials, you think of retired materials, the fiberglass blades that starts with them, but also the seeding that goes into a lot of our products are used by retired materials. So we'll get into that a little bit. And then these are exceptional products. As you can see, these products are not something your, your standard meal planner or a picnic table. They're very unique. Uh, they're built to last for a long period of time. They're heavy, they're durable, and uh, they're gonna be a staple in the communities. Now to get to our product line, we, you saw it a little bit on the first slide, the Deborah Bell Mimi the Carol, you, you can imagine the Mimi the Carol as um, your classic picnic table, but uh, built to last a long time. And this is cut from the root end. All of these products are cut from the root end of the blade, that first 20% uh, that Deborah bench is a very uh, unique product. And you see it's cut to create the kind of the typical park bench, uh, which is the Bell uh, from that standpoint. And just to give you a, a little bit of idea that Deborah the size of that is about eight to 10 feet in diameter. So it's a huge piece and it's very heavy. These, these pieces are, you know, I think the smallest one is about 450 pounds and up to about 1500 pounds. So these are very heavy, very durable uh, products. Also the organic line is the rest of the blade as mentioned, cut all the way down the blade. It's kind of a teardrop uh, shape, the Faye bench, the Fincher bench, the beacon planter. Um, and with that, uh, what you also have the ability and access to is each one of these products, you have the ability to add solar, right? So you can think of if you have an area that is not well lit, uh, maybe a trail that you're looking to actually maybe bring light to, however, you don't want to run electrical wires all over, you have the ability to add solar to each and every one of these uh, products. And then too, as you can see, some products are a mix of a planter and some are a bench. So you have the ability to do a hybrid or can they, they can all be a bench or a planter, as you see with the beacon um, you know, from that view as well. Now let's get to some of the retired materials to tell more of a story. 
we talk about rubber, composite lumber, mixed plastics, textiles. So the rubber first, we partner with a company called Geenan. They are headquartered in Texas and uh, they are the largest tire recycler in the, mayor, in the world. And so we partner with them and then and, uh, it co combined with Nike. So Nike soles, their shoes go into our products. We create a nice seating area, as you can see right here, um, here on this bench, nice seating area. It's heat resistant, slip resistant. So it becomes a scenario where it's a very durable product uh, made to last. Composite lumber, we partner with Trex. Uh, many folks have heard of Trex. They are one of the leaders in decking, uh, durable decking. And I didn't know this, but Trex, that product is made from plastic shrink wrap and sawdust. So they combine that to create a product that's been proven, uh, has a 20 year uh, warranty. And as you can see, we use that product on our um, picnic tables and then the picnic benches as well. Then also the mixed plastics, we partner with a company in South America who uses ocean waste um, and landfill waste, landfill plastics to create a nice you know, product that is durable, that is uh, made to last. Um, and, and once again, it, it, it contributes to that sustainability message, recycling message that many cities and towns are really trying to communicate. And then lastly, textiles, uh, we work, it starts with clothes and things of that sort and bottles. Uh, we work with some of the most exclusive companies, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, uh, we're all in talks with the NBA uh, and putting basketballs, rubber basketballs on our seating to create a scenario where um, uh, the uh, it creates an environment where you can tell a story, the NBA can tell a story that we're using uh, the basketballs to create seating. So it's a, a solid message that goes in cohesion with our uh, fiberglass blades um, from that standpoint. And then also you have the finishes, you have the brilliant white, you have the ability, that's a throwback to the, the turbine blades uh, from the past cracked pepper. You have the ability to choose uh, one of these. Um, also dark walnut is kind of what mimics the state park color. And then one that's very unique and, and many of our uh, towns and cities are really excited about is uh, par, primed and ready. It enables you to create uh, pretty much a canvas of whatever the town is looking to you know, promote, right? You see here kind of a trail map. Uh, you see also scenarios where the town has decided to showcase one of their um, exclusive places that uh, folks may know about. And then here on the uh, right here with the, the different colors, you see handprints. One of the towns had an idea to bring in their children uh, to put handprints on uh, one of our benches and that enabled them to you know, tell a story in that class of 2026. So you really can, if you can dream it up, if you have local artists that wanna be a part of this or you wanna you know, have kind of uh, events like that, you have the ability to um, bring, that, uh, bring that out, bring those ideas out and put them on our products as well. We think about the marketplaces, anywhere there's an open space, you think of national parks, hospitals, and anywhere in between, you have the ability to um, uh, have our use our products. It, it's really a, just a wide open marketplace uh, that we're uh, excited and really want to get these products out as quickly as possible. Now we talk about how to buy uh, traditional purchasing. We've talked to so many cities, uh, they receive grants, state grants, city grant, local grants, that federal grants that maybe regarding sustainability, we start regarding recycling. Well, every one of those boxes we check because our products are sustainable, right? Fiberglass blades and then recycle, right? When it comes to uh, the seeding uh, from that perspective. Then also federal funds, ARPA, um, beautifying areas, revitalizing areas, you have the ability to access them. And then so many cities have just in their local budget but from their parks and recreation and looking to maybe just have something different than just a regular park bench. Well, they've come to us and are purchasing our products to be able to do uh, exactly that. And then to the donation piece, we, we're really using that for kind of, kind of towns and cities that are in need, right? Maybe they don't have budget or maybe it's just not a, an area that is, um, you know, maybe just kind of needs a, little, needs a little more help. Well, that's where our donation arrangement comes in at, uh, and what we, how it works is the donors, right? The renewable energy companies, they're so excited to get involved because they really don't have a, you know, they talk about sustainability, but they don't have a really a way to promote it with our products. They're we're enabled to do that. They're unable to do that. The technology companies, you know, they are one of the biggest 
um, off takers of wind energy, wind energy. So, uh, and they have deep pockets and huge unsustainability. So uh, they naturally want to participate. We talked about the retailers, right, from tracks. A lot of their waste goes into the tracks, whether it be Target, Walmart, Home Depot, um, and then the consumer goods and foundations. They are, you know, uh, looking to dedicate to a cause, provide funds for a cause. And so we have them to participate. And what we ask on the recipients, like the town of Ossining, is sustainability. Everyone is all about sustainability. So that's a big thing. But it's the reimagination, right, of, you know, how, what areas could we, uh, could, could the town actually maybe revitalize, right? Or maybe there's events going on and, and you want to bring a, to spice it up and, and bring some different uh, items in. That's where we come in and, and, and help you guys with that. And then the inspiration, right, inspiring folks to uh, take, participate, right, from that standpoint and tell a story um, as well. And that's where also we come here with the stamp uh, that is on every one of our products. It kind of goes through the actual name of the product, which is the, as in this situation, the bell. And then there's a message that the town has the ability to customize and present to the citizens or visitors to talk about inspiration or sustainability, whatever uh, is deemed necessary with regard to that. And then two, here's a QR code. This, this is very unique. So this QR code here, uh, your citizens or visitors will click that and it'll take them, let me share my screen and it'll take them to a, a different site that is, that promotes here more of a longer message, right? To our citizens, thank you for, you know, whatever uh, commitment to sustainability, you have the ability to, to customize this um, as you go on. And then it's not just that, it's more, right? You have the ability for uh, individuals in the community in the town to take photos, right? We call it history in motion, right? So you can come here in 2023 and then five years later with your children or your grandkids, say, here, here goes mommy and daddy five years ago before you were here on earth, right? Things like that, you have the ability to tell that story uh, right there um, from that perspective. And then also uh, we get, get into more of the details of the products, right? The origins, where it came from, right? We talked about the root in, how it was cut from that standpoint, how long it was in service, the blade, how long it actually is, how many homes it actually powered. Uh, we also can get into the different elements for individuals that want to kind of go deeper and see, hey, this is very unique. And how did they make this thing? Well, uh, you see here the crescent design, it was cut from the blade, uh, the different products that go into it, whether it be the tracks or the rubber, right? You have the ability to um, uh, see those things and even the paint, right? The paint, the finish, uh, where that comes from. And then here at the bottom, we also go into our artisans and our production studio. Uh, these, each one of these pieces are art. They're cut from a blade. None of them are alike, right? They're, they're all maybe slightly a different size, things of that sort. So each one of them sign their name to show, hey, this is not just you know, a, a bench, right? This is a piece of art, functional art. We call it functional art that you can sit on, right? From that standpoint. So that's the, uh, that's the gist of it. Let me get right back here. And then our purpose, delivering products, collaborations and experiences. We uh, deliver excellent products. It's not, not that you can't really, uh, this, you can't really um, look at it and say, it's not a, a beautiful product, it's a work of art. And then we're also solving uh, a problem, right? United retired, uniting retired materials with uh, great finishes. We think about the collaborations, right? Whether it be locally, you're bringing local artists to uh, be able to par, right? Present and, and put a message, hope, a piece of kindness. And then it's a canvas for all. Then the experiences, right? That go along with it, the QR code um, and, and also uh, the different artists, the community events right, that'll be a part of it. So it's really, a, as mentioned, a canvas for all, for every single one of us to enjoy. So that's um, kind of what I wanted to pre present to the uh, town. Thank you. Any questions that anyone has, you know, from that standpoint? Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> first of all, I just wanna tell you that this, this looks so fabulous. Um, and it's smart and 
everybody loves sustainability. Um, I'm going to get a little shark tank on you. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Because I uh, look through your website and I'm curious if you can share how long you've been in business and, um, you know, what other municipalities have um, obtained some of your pieces? Yeah, so uh, we've been around for three years, right? So that's, that's kind of how this is going. And as I mentioned, we are uh, heading into full production here at the end of this month, so beginning of June, and uh, products will be shipped um, that, at that time. We talk about um, in New York, just to communicate some of the participating cities at this time. So we'll, we'll ask that, um, you know, you guys keep this confidential, but Fulton, New York, uh, Gettys, New York, Huntington, Brookhaven, New York, Babylon, and Oneida. Those are the places that are participating, whether it be just purchasing products or receiving a donation, right, from that standpoint. So it's a, it's definitely a, something we've been working on for a long period of time. We have patents around our processes, right? And, and uh, you, you can imagine, as you can say, it, it's pretty amazing, right, what we're doing here, uh, solving this solution. But yeah, it, it's, it's uh, very exciting. And that's why we're here today to present to the town. And uh, everything is produced and created in Ohio? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we have our, that's where our production studio is. Uh, the Blades, it's a 100,000 100, square foot facility. So um, it's huge, right? Because these blades are very long and, and, and heavy, right? From that standpoint. But yeah, everything is produced in Ohio, uh, US, you know, American made. And so let's say if your municipality is interested in obtaining a piece, but we, you know, not to purchase, but to possibly get um, something along the lines of being funded by an organization, or you said like some technology companies um, mm -hmm. are funding some of these projects. Do you, does your company like put that quote unquote deal together, or it's up to the municipality to find the organization to donate? Okay. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. So how the donation process works is um, what we'll do after this call, uh, you know, when, when you guys communicate to us, Hey, we like what you guys are doing and we want to be a part of it. I have a team behind me, a self support team that actually will build a profile based off of the town. Right. Uh, and you'll be able to, you can provide input into that, but we'll do some research, scour your socials, the internet, um, and put together a profile, a private profile, that'll say, here is this town in New York, town of Austin. Uh, they are looking to participate. They have a strong message of sustainability. They have some um, uh, in initiatives around solar, smart homes program. You know, we'll do all of that research, compile that. And then what we'll do is we'll, uh, we will review that with you and say, hey, hey, town, here is what we've compiled. Would you like to add things to you know, take away, you know, you have the ability to provide that feedback. And then what we'll do is we will present to the donors in communication with those, as we talked about, energy companies, the, uh, the retailers, all of the companies that have, you know, skin in our products, we'll say from that standpoint. And so what we'll do is we will communicate to them, say, hey, we have this town of Austin. They're very strong on uh, sustainability, recycling products. And um, they would like to, you know, have one of our products. And with that, what we're doing is we will, um, the product that we are going to, to get donated here is, is the, and you should see my screen here, is the, um, the welcome collection. Uh, so that is what uh, we sell of our, all of our products in collections. And uh, the welcome, as you can see here on our website, gocanvas.com, you have a, have access to so many different products. You think of the um, the big smile is all of the you know, benches, right? From that standpoint, your uh, the picnic collection is uh, your picnic tables, and the, but the welcome collection is what we are um, getting donated uh, would be getting donated to the town. As you can see, the beacon, multiple other products here. As you can see, the gust, the rose, the fade, the fincher. Right. And you have the ability to choose one. Right. Like if, if you want it to be a bench or it to be hybrid, you know, you have the ability to choose that. The donation donated collection actually is uh, recycled rubber. And you can use either plant, stone, gravel. Right. That same thing. And you, you get to choose your finishes. So that is 
what we are um, getting donated. And, and typically the timeline on that is, so um, we are kind of releasing this to our donors here, uh, beginning of January, or excuse me, the beginning of June. And then it's gonna take, you know, we imagine it takes 60, 90 days to get all of these fulfilled. These donors are excited and chomping at the bit, ready to go. Um, so, and then it's gonna take about, you know, six, four to six, six to eight weeks, you know, uh, give or take to, uh, you know, produce and make the products. So if you're looking at late summer, fall, somewhere in that frame where you would receive this collection. And really there's no commitment to, from the city, from a financial or from the town, from a financial standpoint, the um, really the only commitment is you, know, you communicate that you have a place, you have excitement, you're excited about our products. And then you, we want to be a part of, you know, maybe other things that are going on, you know, maybe, Hey, we have, we're renovating a park next year. Well, hey, Jared, we would like to be a part and, and get another one of those collections um, from that standpoint. So that is kind of how the um, donation process works. Okay. In a, in a um, nutshell. Yep. Last question. Um, and I'm not saying they're not. I'm just asking, um, how are your products uh, handicapped accessible? Uh, well, that's a, so they're ADA compliant, but when you say handicap accessible, that's, that's a good question. Um, I'll have to, you, you that, that you stumped me on that one. That one has, hasn't been one that we've, uh, and I know <laughs> that's probably, that, that might've been the, kind of like Shark Tank. So I'm going to just be honest and say, yeah, but it, it, we, they are ADA compliant, 18 inches, right? Uh, the seating from that standpoint. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, let me, uh, let me get the right answer. And then um, I'll make sure in my response and reply back. Uh, when I send the deck to uh, either Martha or, or, or the team, right from that standpoint, we will uh, we'll have an answer for you uh, for that. Thank you. My question is, um, have they been safety tested, evaluated? You know, you're putting them in parks near kids, near people. Um, you know, what kind of testing has been done? Yeah, so they've been uh, uh, low tested, right? So we know that they can um, hold. So these, first of all, the, the turbines are, um, uh, they are used on land and they are also used in the ocean. So we know from a durability standpoint and we've done our own testing to low test them right from that standpoint um, and, and things of that sort. Uh, what we do is we, uh, we sand them. They're, they're very smooth out, right? So it becomes a scenario. And then the seating area, as mentioned, we have, uh, make it made sure and done testing around, you know, as mentioned tracks, for example, is a product that is used in decking today. So that is uh, a proven product from that standpoint. So that's how we've done it um, uh, from a, you know, a safety standpoint is using different products and then having some tests uh, done with regards to, um, you know, uh, the durability of the products and then, you know, slip resistant for, for the rubber and things of that sort. So that's really uh, you can you know rely on us and, and and we can provide information you know studies and things like that as we get deeper into this um, with regard to you know the different types of testing we have done um, you know to, to provide kind of that basis of understanding of that uh, Jared just one question just uh, as far as like is there a maintenance thing that comes along with it and the warranty type thing if Somebody comes and takes all the planters out and the rocks, throws them all over the place. Do you guys come back out, fill them back up or? Yeah, so yeah, what, we, what we're doing is um, on, on the warranty, it's a 20 year warranty on the products, right? On the fiberglass, right? From that standpoint, and even the, the seating, right? We, we built, kind of set it up where that you can't just really, uh, you know, oh, we're gonna take this, take the tracks off of the, the, the picnic table, right? That's just not, you know, we, we've created it from that standpoint, uh, but it's a 20 year warranty on uh, the products. Now, when it comes to the planners and things like that, that's really the responsibility of the town, right? To, to maintain those, right? From that standpoint, we've created it. Um, one of the things we ask, people ask about, hey, what if somebody graffitis the, the fiberglass? Well, we have, we have a, a surface applied, kind of a, a solvent applied to it or that it just comes right off, right? That the paint that is being used is, you know, to uh, able to resist those type of things. But you, you know, you have to, power wash it, you know, from that standpoint. So that is how, how it works when it comes to, yeah, so we don't really do that, like as far as the gravel, we'll, we'll provide that for you, but then you'll have to, the maintenance is on the town uh, from that standpoint. 
Is this shipped all assembled or do you have to build it when it gets on location? Yeah, yeah. So beautiful thing, it's, it's all done on the flatbed, right? You know, from that standpoint, and all we ask is that, hey, you have a process for taking these products off a forklift, things of that sort. So yeah, I mean, it's, we would ship it to the town um, on a flatbed where you would be able to take it off. Yeah, and it's all assembled, right, from that standpoint. Thank you. I'm good. Uh, no questions for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I thank you for a very informative presentation. Um, Bill or Pat, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Are you still here? Yep, that's it, guys. Well, hey, thank you once again. I'll, I will send over the deck here um, uh, to the, uh, to Martha, so so to be able to pass that around, disseminate that to the rest of the board or to the town. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. I know you had to change your schedule to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Okay, well, talk about, we like them. We like the idea of giving them a chance. Do you I, think we have a place for them? I absolutely do. I think they're really- Microphone. Mine? Yours? Microphone. Oops. Oops. Um, <laughs> I, I absolutely do. I think they're functional. They look really well. I think it would be great. It's just the cost factor that <laughs> I'm curious about. I mean, he has it was interesting. He already has like some companies lined up. That's why I asked that are already going to be donors. I think that there's also um, if he took a look at Westchester County, there's really some good large tech companies and other companies that even have um, their own sculpture gardens and whatnot. Like. I mean, there, there might be a lot of uh, ability for us to tap into a company in Westchester to make a donation to us um, that might be, you know, like more meaningful. But in any case, um, I'd like for him to come back to us and answer our questions, and then we can, you know, pursue the next steps. But um, I love it. Yeah, I liked it too. I thought it was um, unique and something we could definitely find a use for i'm in i'm in i think it's a great idea It'd be great That'd yeah be great. i yeah i i think that um yeah well anybody wants to give me free furniture is never a bad thing yeah. <laughs> but, um, um especially sustainable and and i didn't even realize the part that he was talking about was uh talk um promoting all of the sustainability that the town does already so, you know, maybe have it over at Cedar Lane near our um, food scraps recycling program, you know, in the area where the courts where we need to re look at those. Or, I mean, there are a lot of areas that um, could place it. I'd wanna, you know, talk with our parks department, talk with Bill and, and of course the rec advisory board, that's what they're there for. That's what we were talking about, about where they might fit. But, you know, Austin does, we love sustainability and you know showing that recycled thing things can be recycled into functional things i think is a a nice touch so um we'll continue investigating um just what the steps are to make it financially viable for for us sounds good yep all right well that ends our work session topics for today. Um, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session for advice of council, personnel, and contracts. So moved. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And uh, don't forget to thank a police officer during this uh, National Police Week, and we will see you next week for our legislative session. Thank you. <laughs>